Welcome to this week in leadership research. Each week, I share a recently published journal articles on leadership research. My goal is to translate the most up-to-date leadership research to leadership practices that help you in your daily work. This week, I'll try to answer a question: How does a leader's brain activity influence collective team performance? This is the question posed in an article titled "Leader Self-Projection and Collective Role Performance: A Consideration of Visionary Leadership." This article was published in the Leadership Quarterly in 2022. The link of the article is in the description section below. This article attracted my attention because it went far beyond the generic statement that leaders should have and articulate a vision. Not every vision statement motivates me. In fact, most vision statement sounds cliche, with a lot of abstract words, but betray the purpose of using a vision to motivate people. Not every leader is a visionary. In this article, researchers investigated what leaders' brain activities were associated with their visionary behavior and what type of vision. Was associated with their team's collective performance. To examine what happens in visionary leaders' brain, we need to first define visionary leader behavior. Specifically, what type of behavior is considered visionary? One key in this week's article is that researchers connected visionary leader behavior. To the construct of self-projection, which was associated with the brain's default mode network, self-projection refers to mentally simulating oneself to alternative situations independent of the current situation at hand. Researchers synthesized the neuroscience literature and identified three elements of self-projection. First, future-oriented mind wandering. Our mind wanders when we have a free flow of thoughts, and those thoughts are largely oriented towards the future. For example, anticipation and planning. The second element of self-projection is future prospection and hypothetical thinking. It means we imagine and envision a desired future and project ourselves into that desired future. We also mentally simulate hypothetical scenarios. Those what-if scenarios then further stimulate our thinking. We may come up with specific action plans to accomplish a goal. We may also adjust a vision to make it more realistic and attainable. The third element of self-projection is scene construction. We create and maintain a coherent scene of a future or hypothetical situation. You can listen to Martin Luther King's famous "I Have a Dream" speech and learn how he constructed a coherent scene. As he envisioned the future in which freedom reigns from every corner of this land, the three elements of self-projection are consistent with visionary leader behavior. To envision a future, we need to shift our focus from the present to future. Let our mind wander, create a mental space in which we're part of it, and construct coherent scenes in our mind. With an understanding of what self-projection and visionary leader behavior are, we now look at the brain activities associated with them. Neuroscientists have already known that self-projection is associated with brain activity in the default mode network. The default mode network is a network or a system of brain areas. That show increased activity when a person is not focused on the outside world, and the brain is at rest and we are awake, such as during daydreaming and mind wandering. This is why we have the word default in the phrase the default mode network. 
the default mode network can also be active when we think about others, think about ourselves, remember the past, and envision the future. An important feature of the default mode network is that it is negatively correlated with the brain's attention network. When we perform attention-demanding tasks, for example, analyzing data, the default mode network in our brain is suppressed, and we don't have sufficient brain power to remember the past, envision the future, and project ourselves into that future. Neither do we have the brain power to let our mind wander and think about ourselves and others. There is also growing evidence suggesting that the increased brain activity in the default mode network was associated with moral judgment. This is why I wrote an article expressing my concern over an overemphasis on data-driven decision making on leadership training. To make moral decisions, leaders' default mode network needs to be active so that they can take others' perspectives, empathize with others, examine their personal values and social norms, and reach a judgment of what is right and what is wrong. But the default mode network is negatively correlated with the brain's attention network, which is active when we analyze and interpret data to reach a decision. This is why I argue that data-driven decision making may clash with moral decision making. I'm not saying that data-driven leaders are immoral. What I mean is that we may not have the mental capacity to be data-driven and moral at the exact same moment. We can switch between the two brain networks, but we may not be able to have both brain networks active. At the same time, back to the relationship between the default mode network and the visionary leader behavior. Researchers recruited 76 participants in leadership positions, including general managers, senior level managers, chief executive officers, and chief financial officers. Most of them were in their 30s and 40s. And 57.9 were male, and over 80% of them were white participants. Researchers then used EEG to measure the brain activity in the default mode network when leaders' brain were in an alert but at rest state. To measure visionary leader behavior, researchers didn't go to leaders and ask them, "Are you a visionary leader?" Because no one would say that they're not visionary. Instead, researchers went to subordinates and asked them to rate their leaders on three statements on a five-point Likert scale. The statements include: "My leader has a clear understanding of where we're heading." "My leader clearly articulates his or her vision of the future," and "My leader makes plans and takes actions based on future goals." The results of data analysis indicate the relationship between a leader's brain activity in the default mode network and the visionary leader behavior. Lower levels of brain activity in the default mode network, which reflected lower levels of capacity for self-projection into the future, were associated with less visionary leader behavior, as perceived by their subordinates. But how does the brain activity in one leader's brain influence the team's collective performance? To answer this question, researchers focused on whether the vision was socialized or personalized. A socialized vision orientation means that an envisioned future emphasizes collective benefits to organizations and stakeholders instead of leaders themselves. For example, if a leader says the benefits of achieving a goal should go to not only administrators but more importantly go to frontline workers and the public, then that's a socialized vision orientation. If a leader says the benefits of achieving a goal should go to only owners of the company or shareholders or a board, then that's a personalized vision orientation. The results of this week's article suggest that a socialized vision orientation 
moderated the relationship between visionary leader behavior and collective team performance. It means that the relationship was stronger when a leader had a strong orientation toward socialized vision. This is how the researchers connected the brain activity in one leader's brain and the team's collective performance through visionary leader behavior. And this connection was stronger when leaders' vision was socialized than personalized. Here is my view. Another way to connect leaders' brain activities in the default mode network and the collective team performance is to look at the synchronization between leaders' brain activities in the default mode network and their team members' default mode network. When people's brain waves are synchronized, we call it neural coupling or neural synchronization. Have you ever listened to a leader articulating a vision and felt a sense of connection? That feeling has been described as being on the same page. To be precise, the brain activities in our brains and others' brains are on the same brain wavelength, particularly the brain wavelength. Associated with making prediction, processing language, and understanding other people's perspectives, the similar brain activities rise and fall together in all team members' brain. Different individual brains emerge as a collective one through shared brain activities. In a 2015 article titled "Leader Emergence Through Interpersonal Neural Synchronization." Published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, researchers reported that how someone emerged as a leader was characterized by high-level neural synchronization between the leader and followers, and that quality rather than the frequency of communications was associated with synchronization. Specifically, the neural synchronization between a leader and a follower was higher than that between followers in the left temporal parietal junction, an area important for social mentalizing, which refers to understanding and thinking about the mental states of other people. Moreover. The leader-follower neural synchronization during leader-initiated communication was significantly correlated with the leader's communication skills and competence, but not their communication frequency. The brain synchronization takes place when we feel resonated while watching movies, listening to engaging stories, singing songs together at concerts. In social relationship. It appears that we and our loved ones feed each other's brain activity, forming a feedback loop and influencing each other's brain activities. It was found that the brain synchronization was developed in our first year of life. It is important to point out that the brain synchronization takes place when people face one another. When we turn our face away in communication. The brain synchronization disappears. Our face carries critical social information. Maybe this is why gazing, not to stare, is important in face-to-face -face communications, and why face-to-face -face communication is still uniquely more effective than phone calls and emails. How to apply those findings to leadership practices that can help us in our daily work? We need to focus more on the quality of a vision and how a vision is articulated. Most leadership training focuses on having a vision, but not how to evaluate the quality of a vision and how to communicate it. If we know the brain activity associated with visionary leader behavior. Is it possible that we measure leaders' brain activity in the default mode network in leadership training? Because brain activity is not set in stone but malleable with experiences, researchers have proposed the technique of neural feedback. It means using the data on brain activity as feedback for training. 
If we know a leader has lower levels of activity in the default mode network, we can design training activities and practices to encourage leaders to engage in self-projection and envision a future. We can also look at whether there is a neural synchronization between a leader and their team member. Just because a leader articulates a vision every day doesn't necessarily mean that team members resonate with the vision and feel motivated. If people are not on the same page or their brain activities are not on the same wavelength, then we may not have a team, psychologically speaking. If you are a researcher, I hope the article I introduced today can offer some inspirations for your research. If you are a leader or aspire to be a leader, I hope the article can guide you in your leadership practices. Stay open-minded, get inspired, and never stop improving your leadership skills. I'll see you next week in this week in leadership research.